These are the craziest moments in NFL history. And up first, it was November 22nd, 2012. Mark Sanchez versus Tom Brady. And with over 20 million people watching this primetime Thanksgiving matchup, the unthinkable happened. Because on this play, Mark Sanchez tried to scramble up the middle and collided with Moore's rear end so violently that the ball came flying out of his hands. To make matters worse, the fumble was returned by the Patriots for a touchdown. Now that's humiliating. But what's even more humiliating is the Falcons' loss against the Patriots in Super Bowl 51. Trailing 28-3, it seemed almost inevitable that the Falcons were going to win. That was until Tom Brady turned into the second coming of Jesus. Despite trailing by 25, the Patriots marched back to tie the game by the end of regulation. From there, it was all but over once overtime started. However, the moments are only going to get crazier from here. And you don't even want to know what Antonio Brown did. But first, let's talk about the time an NFL game was interrupted, Cowboys versus Giants. And with less than six minutes remaining in the first half, a black cat ran into the middle of the field. Moments later, the cat made its way from the 50-yard line to the end zone, becoming the first cat in NFL history to score a touchdown. God damn, what has our world become? Now, this brings us to Browns and the Jaguars. And when Tim Couch completed a short pass to Quincy Morgan for the first down. However, the referees ended up overturning the call, which pissed fans off. So much so, they even started to throw beer bottles and trash cans on the field. Now that's a sight to see. But fans aren't the only ones causing chaos. Just ask security guards. From taking down streakers to kicking out crazy fans, security guards are put in some difficult situations. This includes physical temptation. A security guard at Sunday's Chargers game masturbating in front of families and just feet from the Chargers cheerleader. Tonight, police are investigating because that security guard could face a charge of lewd act in public. The video pans back and forth between the security guard and the Chargers girls who were just feet away. The guard with his hand down his pants for several minutes masturbating. The woman also told me he tried to do it again around halftime, but someone yelled, get your hands out of your pocket. But thankfully, the security guard cleared the air afterward by telling people to subscribe to the channel. Anyhow, this brings us to the time when Antonio Brown thought he was on Impractical Jokers. See, the Bucks were trailing in the second half to the New York Jets. So naturally, Bruce Arians asked Antonio Brown to enter the game. But Brown refused to re-enter the game, and Arians cut him on the spot, which obviously didn't go well with AB, because the next thing fans saw was a shirtless Antonio Brown sprinting off the field while holding up the peace sign. Kudos to Mike Tomlin for putting up with this diva for nine years. On that note, let's appreciate the Eagles and Bears for putting up with the 1988 Fog Bowl. And man, it was worse than wearing drunk goggles. Because even meteorologists will tell you that this was the equivalent of having clouds on the ground. However, both teams toughed the weather out and the Bears ultimately prevailed 20-12. To sum it up, it will be remembered as the best game you never saw. And speaking of unwatchable games, it's almost impossible to rewatch Super Bowl 25 if you're a Bills fan. Because with time expiring, the Bills had the opportunity to become Super Bowl champions for the first time in franchise history. All they had to do was drain a 47-yard field goal. And sadly, it proved to be the latter. Scott Norwood's kick went wide right, and the Giants became Super Bowl champions instead, leaving Bills fans in absolute disbelief. Now let's move on to an immaculate reception. It was an AFC Divisional playoff game between the Raiders and the Steelers, and with 30 seconds left and a 7-3 lead, it seemed all but certain that the Raiders would prevail. However, the Steelers still had one more drive, and Franco Harris wasn't about to let them lose. Because on the game-deciding drive, Terry Bradshaw threw a pass to John Fuqua, 
which bounced off Fuqua's hands and went straight into the hands of Franco Harris. Then the next thing Than saw was Harris running with the ball into the end zone. What a legendary play. To date, we don't have camera footage to know if the ball hit the ground before Harris's catch. And while this was the craziest play in NFL history, next up we have the craziest trade in NFL history. Because this trade was the catalyst to one of the greatest dynasties in NFL history, the 90s Cowboys. It's known as the Herschel Walker trade. The trade revolved around the Pro Bowl running back Herschel Walker, who rushed for more than 1,500 yards in 1988. Subsequently, Walker was shipped to a Vikings team who believed they were one piece away from a Super Bowl. Only Walker's services didn't come cheap. It ended up costing the Vikings five players in six draft picks. The Cowboys then turned these picks into multiple cornerstone pieces, such as Emmitt Smith, Russell Maryland, Kevin Smith, and Darren Woodson. And as a result, they went on to win the Super Bowl three times in a four-year span from 1993 to 1996. On the other hand, the Vikings weren't so lucky. Walker only lasted two and a half seasons with purple and gold, without hitting the thousand-yard rushing mark once. On top of this, the Vikings went from making the NFC Championship and the Divisional Rounds the two years prior to only making the playoffs once in Walker's tenure. It doesn't get much worse than that. Well, except for one other time. Because it's one thing to make bad moves, but it's another not to make moves at all. You see, it was 2003 and the Vikings held the coveted 7th overall pick. Only when the draft got to their turn, they were slow at the trigger. So much so that they missed their pick altogether. Imagine spending billions of dollars to run a football team and hire scouts, and you can't even make your pick in time. But luckily, it all worked out in the end. After the Jaguars and Panthers also beat the Vikings to the punch, the Vikings were finally able to get their act together and select future Pro Bowl offensive lineman Kevin Williams. Phew! <laughs> now that's a sigh of relief. Surely it's a one-time blunder, right? Wrong. Fast forward eight years to 2011 and the Vikings missed their pick again! Tell me that isn't crazy. But not as crazy as these shoes, these cleats that got a player fined $50,000. And I know you want to hear more about that, so just click this video right here.